All right, friends, <clears throat> it's T and I'm back with another video. It's on this guy called Ivan Dujeric. Now, I once did it on my old channel. I did a video about him. I would call this guy a lifting slave, but he has so many uh, depressing moments. I mean, it's just it's crazy, but I will. Uh, we'll, let's review this. I'll go over this again. Squat every squat every day. One four seventy seven. It's harder for taller dudes to get jacked. Not no, not necessarily. If you know what you're doing, the problem is you don't know. Just like everybody growing up, we didn't know. We would we would have loved to have known, but we don't know how to build our bodies. If somebody said to me ten years ago that in your mid thirties you're going to be a hundred kilos, I would not believe them. Hundred kilos seems to be uh, a barrier in my mind that basically says that. You're overweight. At least that's what I thought back in the day when I was early 20s. When I was 20, I was probably around 70, 75 kilos, very fit, played basketball day and night. Uh, from the ages of 12 to 20, I dedicated all of my free time that I could summon into basketball. And you can imagine what basketball is, especially in Australia. It's basically a run and gun game. Uh, I would say that as a young person, you should do as many sports as possible. Do many things that you're unfamiliar with doing. It's very important. Why? Because you'll get this ultrastructural muscle injuries to the fossil fibers, and they will recalibrate themselves. They'll get a do you'll get a donation of these nuclei. Now, I can't tell you if they're 100% permanent forever. There's a gravitational unloading for a long time. They could possibly go away. I can't really tell you. They say they're permanent, but there's other conflicting signs that says they may not be. They could they could go away. I don't know. Uh, look, you can you can lose muscle fiber. You can lose muscle cells. You literally can lose lose muscle cells. You can gain them, but you can also lose them. So yeah, I don't find anything totally permanent in this world but definitely they last longer and they're physically there there's something there material i know some parts of the world there's a better athletics programs and there's weights and power cleans and snatches and all that stuff that's incorporated i would say if you get more of these type 2 muscle cells you become better you become much better even in any other sport as you're growing up as a kid that's why i say kids should do as many things that they're unaccustomed to doing to expose themselves to get these nuclei because as a kid i exposed myself to a lot of things i was doing i was unaccustomed to and i'm telling you i got this damage and it lasted for days all the time i would swim because i was crazy as a kid we would swim for hours we didn't want to leave the pool and that was the first day i was in the pool can you imagine going for the first time in the pool you haven't been swimming for a whole year and you're gonna swim for like four five hours six seven eight hours at the swimming pool and you don't want to leave what do you think is going to happen the next day when you wake up in the morning you're not going to be able to move because you have an ultrastructural muscle injury in your fibers and the satellite cell is going to donate more of these nuclei and you're going to get more type 2 muscle fibers see what i mean now when you go ice skating you don't want to just stop ice skating that first day you're with your friends man you're going to be ice skating for three four hours or something the next day when you wake up you're not going to be able to walk even skiing you have to be in a bent position you're constantly your knees are bent you can't ski standing straight and so you're gonna get somewhat some some something in your thighs so yeah these you know climbing and you know doing a bunch of stuff using your arms your body your back your chest whatever it is you're doing at the playground or doing these sports or soccer whatever you're playing there basketball for hours moving your arms up and down throwing a basketball can cause a relative amount of damage definitely the very first time when you come out there that's why you want to expose yourself to as many unfamiliar things that you're doing to get these nuclei yes muscle cells into somebody's strength and conditioning in australia there was none of that man like i played division one basketball through the junior ranks essentially from under 12s under 14s all the way to under 20s and we never touched any weights. You know, we would go to the sand dunes, the local beach here, and we would run up and down some sand dunes. That was basically the only extracurricular activity that we would do. And this is in Division One basketball team, junior, like, a, you know, top junior basketball. Yeah, I used to pass by this school sometimes, 
and there's a playground across the street, like a park across the street from that park, from the school, because they could have run at the school, I don't know, but they had him run through that green area. They'd have these kids run, you know, and the kids themselves are so lazy. That's the problem with them, some of them. But eventually, with the time, they get used to that running. That definitely helps them, conditions them, makes them feel better, gives them some energy as a child. You have a lot of pent-up energy as a child. And so it's, an, it's, it's a calming effect for them in the school. That's why they have re recesses in school. You have a recess, you've got to come out and play for a while, then come back into the school, into the school, so you can concentrate, you know, on your studies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your slave studies, I call it. <laughs> they ain't teaching you how to make money. I live. I was 70, 75 kilos, very fit. I remember the best I got was, I think I was like 18 minute 5K run. I think that that was around 17, 18 minutes or something like that. I could do a 5K. Uh, I hope I'm getting that right, but yeah, I mean, there's no way in hell I could do that now. So completely different build for completely different purpose. Towards the end of that, you know basketball career of mine before i started nursing i started dabbling with weights and going to the local basketball gym uh, underneath that had like this little uh, weight room i'd go in there and just go on lap machine do some pull-ups push-ups that kind of thing i didn't know much about anything but that's kind of where i started messing around with weights and it wasn't until i was 25 long gone from basketball I uh, started living by myself. Me and my missus both were paying gym membership, and we thought, why the hell are we paying 300 bucks a year uh, each for membership, or we can, for 500 bucks, get a squat? The best is he's talking about bone density, because he said he weighed the same, and his friend told him, what about bone density, lifting these heavy weights? Well, yeah, bone density. It's an adaptation process, man. You know that? That's what really happens there. I don't want to listen to this. He's talking too much weird stuff. Is basically nine years later, I was steadily putting weight on, uh, and it was really weird because the scales were moving, but I wasn't changing. I wasn't. I didn't have a belly. Far from it. That happens with a lot of people. You're becoming dense. I think people don't understand the difference between density and mass. There is a difference between density, being dense, and having mass. And so you stand on the scale. And you go, what? Now, this guy's going to mention it. But I was putting on weight. I don't know where the weight was. I always used to kind of think to myself, how the hell am I 85 kilos? I look the same I was before. And it wasn't until one of my colleagues at work said, Ivan, you haven't thought about bone density. And I thought, bone density? He's like, dude, you're, you're lifting heavy weight. It's not just the muscle tissue that you're training. There's also bone, bone density. You're I know, of course. These people, they're so, they're so out to lunch. They don't even know what they're training for, bro. Get it? This is the problem with the fitness industry and all these lifters and everybody. They don't know what the fuck they're training for. Obviously, if you're lifting heavy weight, it's an adaptation process. So your bones have to adapt by giving you what? More material. Because your body cannot handle these ultra-structural muscle injuries. Your fiber gets micro injuries in them they get micro injuries lifting this heavy weight and those micro injuries repair and remodel themselves bigger and stronger yeah so you weighing yourself on the scale thinking what the hell the scale went up but i haven't changed you have changed you've gotten denser yeah that's the whole point to build density as as, as opposed to mass so yeah bones are getting more resilient more dense to survive the stimulus that you're providing that's why runners definitely don't want to get heavy big heavy bones you want to focus on muscle damage you don't want to lift exorbitantly heavy weights you want to, you can lift in a gym but you don't want to lift the super heaviest weight if anything and you want to run by cause you want to run a lot causing these damages in the muscle fibers by running your whole ambition is to run faster. Why would you want to slow yourself down by carrying a bunch of heavy bones around? That's why when I saw these runners starting to do powerlifting, I thought that that was the wrong move. That is inhibiting your running abilities because heavy weights cause an adaptation in bone structure and therefore it's going to get denser and heavier.
and you have to carry that de that that density around but again with the bone becoming denser will muscles will muscles accommodate and will they get denser as well see what i mean because something else is getting dense really hard to say obviously it's a it's a different rate of healing different rate of, of adaptation with the bone but that's also a, a, a tissue that is trying to uh, get better for the next time you do the same thing and then when I started the squat every day that's when I really started feeling the weight shift now I am squatting maximum weight for the first year basically that's kind of what the philosophy was I'm trying to get to like 170 180 every single day i was always peaking always pushing doing several singles at 60 140 something like that always straining against the bar that's what i was doing and the way go we started going up and going up and i remember having conversations with colleagues at work who went into kickboxing and into running marathon running some of these guys look exactly like me but i'm like 20 kilos heavier so weight in itself on the scale is a misrepresentation of what's actually going on with your body it's not you know size is not equal to size to different individuals i remember meeting a fella in the gym he was prepping for a bodybuilding show same heart as me same like same heart as me he looked like he was at least 15 kilos heavier than me he was cut he was shredded his pecs deltoids everything was cut up he had upper chest, he, he had these forearms, biceps. He looked way heavier than me. And I said to him, you know, how much are you weighing right now? And he's like, I'm weighing 85, 80 kilos. And I'm like, how the hell am I 15 kilos heavier than you? I'm heavier than him, yet he looks bigger than me. And I'm standing right next to the guy. So weight, especially when you're like six one, six foot, it's, it's, it's a big surface area, lots and lots of surface area to play with. Yeah, I'd have to agree with him, but he doesn't know what he's shooting for. It's unlike when you see the bodybuilders like Lee Priest and some of these other guys. Like a lot of these bodybuilders are like 5'3", five 5'4". Foot five foot Again, those guys are shooting for sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. They're shooting for mass and not so much as the density. So they put on 10 kilos, you can... Yeah, but that 10 kilos of mass is sarcoplasmic. It isn't, myofi that isn't based on myofibular growth. See the quads, you can see these muscle bellies transform. Whereas for me, at 6'6", six, six, you need a sh like lots and lots of weight. Look, you want, you, want some, you want heavy bones, big dense bones, lift a heavy weight. You want myofibular growth, micro-injure them or get them to split. All right, it's specific training for that. Now he's like, oh, I'm lifting a heavy weight and I looked on the scale and I gained weight, but I don't see it on my body. And then the guy, ha a guy that he doesn't know from an office he met has to tell him that, what about the bones, duh, your bones got bigger. And he's like, oh, my bones got bigger? Uh, I lift a heavy weight, but they get bigger. Like these are the, this is the kind of people that that, that revolve out in the fitness industry. Uh, duh. <laughs> to actually look like you put on mass. Uh, that's something that I've, that I've kind of noticed. A lot of these guys that we follow on social media seem to be. It's funny how this guy knows absolutely nothing about bodybuilding. Absolutely nothing, nothing. It's incredible. These people, they're just, they know nothing. On the shorter end. And for us tall guys, I mean, I'm not tall in the basketball stands at all. I've played with guys that were 6'8", 6'9", 6'10". You know, but the, the taller you get, the more impossible it becomes to actually put on enough size to actually look like you lift. That's absolutely a fallacy. That is fake. That is absolutely fake. <laughs> That's just fake, bro. The taller you get, you're born with a, a finite amount of muscle fibers that hits an MND size when you're 15 years old. So as you're growing from 15 and it hits this limit, there's no more muscle fibers, they start stretching out. They stretch, but the body will compensate by giving more of these, you know, somewhat, if, it go, if you get too tall, it still has to give you some of these uh, uh, muscle cells to compensate for the stretching. They're not going to keep stretching and stretching and then they're just going to be like, what, a needle? Like, like a, what do you call it, like a thread? 
So they have to get, they have to accommodate by getting slightly bigger too. Now they're not going to get the biggest because they're stretching out definitely. But that's up to you how much you eat and what you're doing. I don't know. It's all dependent on the person. Actually look good. It's unfortunate, but it's kind of like, it's kind of the way it is, man. Like a lot of these guys look freaking great. They, they, they put on five kilos of, of weight and they look plump. They, they, they look full. Whereas me, I'll put on five kilos, it's like I haven't done anything. Um, it's, it's just, it's one. Yeah, because you're not focused on that. You don't know what you're doing. You think a lift, lifting a heavy weight has magic powers to transform your body? You're crazy. It isn't going to transform anything. There are some adaptations, the bones, like he just said, and a bunch of other things. But that's, that's not, man. That doesn't work like that. One of those realizations that... As a diet plays a big part how you look like. Carnivore diet as opposed to a herbivore diet. You want to look like a herbivore? Eat a herbivore diet. You want to look like a carnivore? Eat a carnivore diet. Clear distinction between aesthetics and performance. It's like... Aesthetics and performance. Aesthetics could have a beneficial effect on performance too as well. If you're carrying too much fat, that could hinder your performance, right? So if you're aesthetic, you have low body fat, that could help you, couldn't it? So what I mean, everything is relative to your sport, whatever it is you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. I will just tell you this. If you are a professional runner, you do not want to have heavy bones. I'm going to tell you that long distance runners and sprinters, they don't have heavy bones, okay? But they look muscular, definitely. They're going to look muscular depending on their diet, what they're doing. These are short bouts. So you want to be have low body fat. You want to have a lot of type 2 muscle fibers firing. And you don't want to have these dense bones. <laughs> you understand me? You're going to be carrying them all over the place. I'm not saying your body probably would adjust by compensating you with, more, with some more muscle mass to accommodate for carrying those heavy bones. Definitely it would. But again, moving so fast, this velocity, speed, everything through, through uh, you know, moving through real time, you definitely want to be lighter to move a lot faster, but you want to be stronger at the same time. See what I mean? You don't want too much of this bone density. You definitely want some bone density. You want some, you know, dense uh, muscles, type 2 muscle fibers and all that for your sport, the geared to whatever sport you're doing. Now, maybe if you're a football player, you may want to have denser bones for sure, okay? And having more dense muscles, definitely. As a protection, as a means of protection, and like in rugby or whatever, if it's a very physical contact sport, you definitely want to have stronger stronger bones and muscles. But in, in um, soccer, uh, playing these sports like soccer, um, I don't know, uh, sprinting, long distance running, you definitely don't need any of that. So that's why you have to gear your training towards whatever it is that you're doing. But if you gear your training the wrong way, then what the outcome that you gave may not be that which you're expecting. <laughs> and reality as well, like, you know, if somebody comes up to you, like one of these bodybuilders, I remember back in the day, man, like I had uh, a friend who was into bodybuilding and you know, he would invite me to these shows. I would go and watch these shows, and I'm like, on stage, I look, these, these dudes look like huge. And then after the show, you'd stand next to them, and you're like, what the hell, man? This guy's a midget. He's a midget. But on the pictures, he looks like a giant. So the, 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 even re, in reality, you, you can get fooled about size and proportions and expectations. And if you are like 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", and you are natural, you basically have to settle for a certain type of physique. You, you can't be looking like somebody that's 5'5". Five five. It, it's impossible. You're not going to get the muscle fullness. You're not going to get, you know, the, 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 the separation that you're thinking about. You're just not going to get that aesthetic look. I, I could be completely wrong. You are going to get it if that's what you're shooting for. But if you're not and doing something that doesn't gear towards that, of course not. What's he talking about, man? It's crazy. But I, man, you know, at 6'1", I, I think I would need to be like 110, 115 kilos to look like I'm jacked. And I don't, like, I really don't know whether I can anabolic, anabolically support that much tissue without being a fat lard, a fat tub of lard. I, you know, how do you have so much muscle tissue? Uh, so this is where I kind of get in trouble. I'm like, okay, I need to put on X amount of fat 
to put on like 20, 30, 20 kilos of lean muscle mass, right? So uh, I want to take you back when I was 20. I was 75 kilos. Now I'm 103 kilos, right? So that's 25 kilos of weight. How much of that 25 kilos is actually muscle? How much of that? See that? He's questioning it now. See that? His problem is he doesn't know anything about lifting. He's just a lifting slave in a garage. This is what I'm trying to explain to you. You people are all lifting slaves because you don't know what you're training really for. That's I know a lot of people, they don't even know what they're training. When I ask them in the gym, what are you doing? They're like, I'm, I'm building muscle. You are building muscle? What kind of muscle are you building? Now he's questioning what that weight was. Is it muscle? No, sarcoplasmic. It's artificial muscle growth. I mean, we can estimate, you know, look at me and whatever. I would say I'm at least 20% body fat. At least. There's no way, I, you, know, you know, like, there's no way I, I've got 15 kilos of muscle on me. I, I mean, I, I'm not an expert when it comes to this sort of stuff, body composition and whatever, but I just keep thinking to myself, all right, you know, a lot of you guys are telling me, Ivan, you got to get more muscle, you got to get more muscle. Like, you won't be able to, like, hit your goals if you are freaking 95 kilos. And I was stubborn. For a very, very long time, I was stubborn, like, nah, man. I do not want to get that big. I don't want to be overweight and whatever. But then you get to a point where, like, okay, if I'm going to get some of these goals that I'm training for, uh, I'm going to have to eat. And uh, and after I eat, maybe a few times a year, I'm going to have to have a period where I cut. And I have that kind of thing. Because if I go half, half-heartedly towards my goals, I'm going to plateau. And I've found plateauing hard. It's not like the Bulgarians where... You're not, man, this, I love this plateau thing. You're not plateauing. Body has an adaptation process. And where these adaptations begin and end, it's dependent on what you're doing, what you're trying to get. You understand me? You have to figure it out on your own. There is no such thing as a plateau. That's a made up word, man. It's based on adaptations, okay? That could stay lean all year round, stay in their weightlifting weight classes. You know, they would take the drugs, you know, push their uh, anabolic capacity as much as possible without having to put on 20 kilos of freaking body weight and then cut. Uh, it's just simple. Like, oh, the only thing I have that is anabolic is water and food. So if I don't eat... Okay, so you can't compare you can't compare people taking steroids for a cosmetic look or doing cosmetic things or for for, for performance. It's either for, for 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 performance or an artificial cosmetic look that doesn't last based on the drug. Okay, so when you stop taking the drug, it all goes away. Even this fake strength. Okay, man. So I don't know why he's comparing these things. This guy needs to get more educated, man. Are people really that dumb out there, or what? I'm not going to get anywhere. Like, and if, if you want to just stay where you are, that's okay, man. If you want to look good, that's okay. But if you are performance-based and you want to get to the 180 kilo bench press, you want to get to like 250 squat, you want to get to 300 deadlift, you're going to have to eat. And then you're going to have to cut and eat and cut and eat and cut and go through those cycles. I used to hate the sound of that. But that's the realization I have now. Uh, food is anabolic. You don't have to eat and cut, eat and cut, like he says. That's all made up, okay? That's fake shit. That's why it doesn't work for anybody. When you're doing fake things, what do you expect the outcome you're going to get? It's not the outcome that you were predicting. You were predicting a different outcome, and you got the wrong outcome because you're doing the wrong thing. Okay, man? You can control what type of food you get in. You want to get some nutrition. Every time you open your mouth and put something in, you know, to, 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 to eat, make sure it's proper food, man. Make sure it's... Of course, proper food. You want to eat high dense nutrient diet and it, it could make you anabolic. In other words, you can shut off the catabolic hormone, convert it to an androgen so it doesn't have to compete with the myositic energy receptor. That's the whole point in growth. That's why they say over. The problem with society is overfed and undernourished. <laughs> Let's watch another video of his. He's he, he has like he's got some other weird videos where he's crying. I saw one recently. It was really funny. He was so depressed sitting there. I think it's this one. Squat every day. No, maybe it's this one. Six days ago. Yeah. Celebrate winter's warmest moments in a Hyundai at the I Love Winter Sales. I don't like it. So, can somebody explain to me how you can be really big and strong and have these bulging muscles 
and at the same time have a flat belly, a six pack. Or in other words, how can you be really strong and big and muscular and also be shredded? Makes no sense to me. I am in my strongest fa Makes no sense to you. Well, if they're taking cosmetics and doing cosmetically fake, then yeah, but you can also do that naturally if you want. Some semi, yeah. Days in my life. And I'm also... It's because it's called an adaptation process. They actually put work into it, something that you're not doing. Can they explain to me how these people could be this, that, this, jacked, and, you know, aesthetic and blue, blah, uh, maybe because they put the work into it and you're not, you're not actually geared towards doing that. You keep, you're a lifting slave, you keep lifting a heavy weight. So how the fuck could you achieve these goals if you're a lifting slave, bro? In the biggest phase of my life. I woke up this morning from a night shift, uh, started getting ready to go outside, and I looked, I mean, I don't look at myself all that often, I'm not aesthetics based, but I don't want to look like crap. And right now I feel like I look like crap. I look at myself from the side angle and I have this freaking belly, like I'm pregnant. A lot of that is not fat, I'm bloated for whatever reason, but it's not aesthetically pleasing. I remember my basketball days, I used to have a six pack all the time. I'd walk around all the time, six pack. Back then I was like 70, 75 kilos. Right now I'm like 102, 103 kilos. In order for me to grow strong and big and have big muscles, big limbs, shoulders, uh, biceps, triceps, forearms, quads, legs, all of that stuff, lats, back, I need to eat big. When you eat this is funny. I, if to, in order for me to have all these things, I need to eat big. You definitely need to, be, need to eat big to... To get big but you may get be getting a different outcome i told you is sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and not based on myofibular growth so he thinks that muscles grow by getting by <laughs> they get big by eating a bunch of food you understand me they do they will but it won't be the outcome that you're that you're looking for it'll be sarcoplasmic it won't be myofibular because myofibular growth has an mnd size limit a, a, a domain size limit yeah man a nuclear domain size limit okay eat a lot of food you get a big belly there's just more stuff in your belly now i mentioned that i don't yeah if you eat the wrong food you'll get a big belly i thought that protein builds muscles again why are these people eating a herbivore diet if protein builds muscles if protein synthesis needs to exceed this breakdown to build muscle then why aren't you eating that? And here's another problem. Now that you are eating this protein synthesis, exceeding this breakdown, blah, 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 why aren't you growing? Because muscle has an MND size limit. So what do you need to do? You need to figure out how to get more of these muscle cells. And if you think it's just chronically lifting or lifting a heavy weight off the floor, you are wrong big time, my friend. You are out to lunch. Have a lot of belly fat, like if I grab myself by the belly, it's not like 50 million rolls, but there is a roll, right? There, there is something there. A lot of that stuff is I'm full of food. He's like so depressed moving this hammer up and down. Look at him, he's, he's a lifting slave, bro. He can't achieve his goals, you understand me? What is your goal exactly? To be a lifting slave in a gym? Do you want aesthetics? Why is he moaning and crying about people with aesthetics, looking good, lifting jack, this, that? Why don't you go out, instead of fucking complaining about it and crying and screaming and yelling and all this about everybody being fake natties, go out there and discover it yourself. Stop sitting there and fucking crying about this shit. See what I mean? So when I see Arnold Schwarzenegger... The information is out there these days. You can look it up. There's a thing called NCBI, man. There's a thing called PubMed. It tells you how muscle, these, these adaptations of muscle, how that's built. And I see all of these guys on the stage bodybuilding and I'm looking at my freaking photo, uh, this poster that I have recently got in the mail. I'm looking at them. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, I can see myself on camera there. And I'm, now I have like a visual representation on this poster. I'm looking at guys who look, who look really, really good. And I'm like, damn, man, these dudes are humongous and they have a sunken belly. Is that possible naturally? Can somebody explain? It's possible naturally, and it's also, you're looking at probably steroid people. Again, man, it's artificial, and something uses cosmetics for an artificial look. Explain to me if that is possible naturally. 
to have humongous shoulders, traps, lat. Look, man, everything and anything is possible naturally. It depends on what you're shooting for. Again, your goal. Quads. I don't think you're going to get those abs and that body by waving that hammer around and yakking about it, complaining about it all day. Strings, calves. Everything's huge, but the belly's small. To me, that screams unnatural methods. That, that screams chemistry. So, yeah, definitely. That's the first thing people... It's chemistry, it's unnatural, blah, blah. But what about people that do do it naturally? They put the work and effort into it. See what I mean? To me. It makes no sense to... You know how we say that you can't spot reduce? Meaning that if you have these... Uh, you know, uh, uh, flappy freaking triceps that a lot of women complain about. You know, they're like, Ivan, how do I get rid of these like flappy arms? Like, you know, what exercises can I do? And I always say, man, you can. Why does it have to? The first thing he does is, oh, they have these flappy arms, these women. What can I do to spot reduce? So, what can I do to get rid of these flappy arms? Why does he think exercise has some kind of magic power to get rid of it? It's really simple, like I showed before at uh, Steak and Butter Gal. You, you saw these, these women there. They transformed their bodies how? Was it with exercise? Absolutely not. It was with the carnivore diet. They transformed their body with a carnivore diet because you got there by eating a herbivore diet. Your body was naturally looking good as a young person, but you kept eating an unnatural diet, an artificial diet. So your body transformed according to that diet. You understand me? Now, if you wanted to go back and look good and this whole thing about spa reducing and everything, there is no such thing. Of course not. They're telling you the truth. There's no spa re reduction. But what you're doing is you're going on a carnivore diet. So those areas will go away and your body will transform to a normal body. Look, he's all complaining there. Look at his chubby little fat little body. But he can't stop eating donuts all day. He thinks donuts are, are food. Donuts are not food, bro. <laughs> but you'll look like a donut if it jiggles you'll jiggle too get it yeah man if it's soft and mushy you'll turn you'll turn soft and mushy but if it's hard lean and mean you have to, that's what you'll transform into you can't spot reduce you can't do an exercise for a given body part and expect that body part to be you know losing fat while everything else stays the same no you can't choose where the fat gets melted and also you can't no you can't choose but but eating a carnivore diet will definitely choose for you <laughs> you can't choose where the, the fat gets stored so if you are eating big to grow big muscles you're probably going to have big stores of food somewhere in my case if you're eating big to get big muscles you won't get big muscles eating big but you will get sarcoplasmic muscles artificial muscle growth so this guy's all over the place he's got like steroid people artificial people artificial diets because he lives in such an artificial world he's so unattached with nature what is natural to his in his mind he thinks he's so confused with natural unnatural artificial <laughs> artificial muscles uh, artificial food artificial drugs artificial this that he's all over the place man <laughs> this is confusion here it's all in the abdomen i look at my father he's skinny arms skinny legs he's got abdomen being a big gut that thing not, not that your I father's got sarcopenia drink beer but this is where perhaps my family stores its fat so it's almost like a dilemma, right? I am... Well, that's not where your family stores its fat, man, okay? Strongest I've ever been. If your body's storing fat in your stomach, it's doing it for a reason, because you're doing something. It's called an adaptation process, okay? Today, I even hit a PR... It's trying to protect your organs from being destroyed, because you're eating such an artificial fat diet, whatever. And so what it does, it moves it into the center area of your belly to protect. It's a... It's an adaptation process. It's a protection. It's a protecting process. That's why you go, why do I have a big belly? Well, why aren't your organs big and fat all the way around your stomach and your back area? They'd be protruding. You'd be dead. In the bench press, 150 kilos. In the last month, I've hit like four different freaking PRs on bench press. 142, 145, 147, and now 150. Never felt strong in my upper body ever, period. But also don't remember ever looking like this either. I've got this freaking gut. Because you never worked, because you never worked on your upper body, and then you're unhappy with about the gut too. <laughs> right? And I don't like looking at it, but I like how I how I behave. So it's like, okay, no worries, I can lose all of that. 
I'll lose 10 kilos of this body weight. I'll become shredded again. I'll have, you know, six pack and whatever. But guess what's going to happen to I like how he says, I'll lose. No, the body will lose it, not you will lose. You have to do something specific to lose that. All my lifts, they're going to go shit. I'm going to No, your lifts are not going to go to shit. Well, yeah, if it's based on... Oh, man. If it's not based on natural strength and it's based on these androgen practice strength, like androgen receptor strength, of course it's going to go away. Duh. You didn't build any strength. You built something artificial, bro. Fuck it, man. Are people so daft out there or what? Use my bench press. I'm going to lose all these things. It's like, okay, naturally, is it? Listen to me. To build natural strength, you have to build more myofibular growth, type 2 or whatever, okay? Now, if you want to build artificial strength, just keep lifting these weights and you'll build a lot of this artificial androgen receptor strength, okay? Yeah, for the androgens to bind in, you can lift a heavy weight, all right? Your body's not going to give you more muscle because it's got to carry you through a famine, dude. Hello. Possible to be at your peak strength while also having a six pack. Can you imagine anything that you lifted or you did, you'd get fucking your muscles would keep growing and they wouldn't stop growing? Christ, man, what would happen to you? Think about that for a moment. Why do you think muscles are postmetotic? They don't split, divide, and increase in number just because you lifted something. It's two opposite worlds. You cannot sit on those two chairs. It's impossible. Myo I'm going to explain this again. My own nuclei cannot split and divide. The only cell that can split and divide and increase in number is the satellite cell. And it is quiescent. It is quiescent. And it's frustrating, right? Because we always want what you don't have. It's like the number one rule to human psychology. You've got a Ferrari, but the neighbor's got a Lamborghini. That Lamborghini looks a lot better than your Ferrari. Only because it's just different. You want you want something else. And I remember when I was a skinny freaking basketball player, I'm like, man, I wish I could squat 100 kilos. I wish I could squat 100 kilos. Now I can squat 210, 212, and I've got this body to do it, and I don't like it. So what's it going to be, man? Like, where where do you want to go? Then you got to change it. It's, you know, it's... I don't In know. other words, you got to get it to change. What do you need to do? Investigate. I mean, and all the people in my life that I've ever met who have nothing to do with freaking gym life, the really strong people, like I remember the concrete is some of the, the tradies that I know, and they're like just tough looking people. You shake their hand, you feel like you're going to have your, your shoulder ripped out of the socket. None of these dudes are your typical bodybuilder kind of what we see on, on, on the media. No, man, they all have a bit of a belly. They eat big, they, they, they move a lot of weight, they do a physical job, but they have a belly. So is it natural? Because you're eating a herbivore diet and you have a belly because I told you, because that weight is being shifted towards the stomach area, away from the organs to protect it. For a bloke who is really strong to have a belly. Look at the strong man, guys. They don't give a shit about aesthetics. All they care about is strength, performance. They all have a belly. Ah, he finally revealed it. Performance. They're only interested in performance. You understand me? But you can by gaining more myofibular growth. That increases your performance. Sarcoplasmic can increase your performance, but that's endurance. That's the difference. So you need to figure out which performance you want to increase. Which performance in that area do you want to increase? Sarcoplasmic, myofibular, lifting a heavy weight, androgen receptor strength? I don't know. It's all dependent on what you're trying to perform for. Really, man. Most of them have a belly. The one guy that I think about who didn't have a belly back in the day, Marcus, was it Marcus? Or was it Marius Pujanowski, the Polish guy? He, yeah, that fucking guy is a, smart, is a smart bastard. That's why. He was probably the, only, the first guy that I looked at and I was like, man, look at this. Because he never ate shit and he was on steroids and he took cutting drugs for sure. He took a combination of everything. This guy, this is back in the day when I was a kid, man. I didn't realize anything. I didn't understand any of this stuff. And I thought to myself, Man, I want to be like him. What I didn't realize is that that guy... Man, I want to be like that. You know, it's like making these phony posters or these phony pictures online. People augment all these pictures artificially and they go, Man, I want to be like this guy. I love this shit. It's crazy. As a freaking pharmacy following him around wherever he goes. You know, because he's so freaking anabolic. He's so juiced up to the gills all the shit that he's taking that he can look like a bodybuilder while outperforming the dudes who are taking drugs to also be a, a good at performing so he's doing both at the same time and beating everyone so how, how how can that be how can you eat so much food 
so much because that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to win. People who want to who want it badly enough will get it. Much damn food. You eat a cow a day, and yet you look like you eat one egg a day. It makes no sense to me. It's like you want to move ten tons of sand, but you don't want to drive the truck. You want to drive your Ferrari. Well, then, then that's the problem with that. See that, and you may get the wrong outcome. Doesn't you, you can't do it, dude. Either you're gonna go fast between A and B, or you're gonna move a lot of sand from A to B. This, 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 it's like logically doesn't make sense. And this is the this is the mental health. This is the the the. I guess the small fear that plagues all of us, it's like when we are freaking shredded and look good, we're unhappy because we, we can't perform, let's say. We can't hit the numbers. So in turn... You can hit the numbers. You just don't know what you're doing. That's your problem. You want to hit numbers because it's artificial strength. You have to kind of decide which way you're going to be. Do you want that? Or it isn't based on natural strength. It's artificial strength. You want to build natural strength and build your body and stop lifting a heavy weight like an idiot. Get stronger naturally. Get yourself stronger naturally so your lifts move up naturally. Do you want to be fluffy? Maybe have that gut hanging out? But have big muscles, full muscles, full shoulders. Like I say to you, man, I've put on size on my legs, on my arms, on my forearms, on my back, on my traps. I've never had traps like this before in my life. But when you look at me on I mean, when you look at this guy, would you even think that he lifted a weight walking down the street? He absolutely looks like Blaha. None of these people look like they lift a weight. They just look like an average dude because it's based on androgen receptor strength training. Get it, man? Yeah. <laughs> this isn't myofibular growth, bro. Get it, bro? Fuck it, man. In camera, the belly is larger and he kind of I don't know he makes everything else what the hell is he doing here with this band holding up this kettlebell standing there I just I don't get it it's just this is just a waste you're already lifting heavy weight in real time the fuck do you need to do that for well, it doesn't look as, as impressive I just everything is grown proportionally my belly included so it's like okay I'm striving to look like these dudes on the poster over here who are Ah, I'm striving to look like these guys in the poster over here. And those posters, they're, they're all like using filters and touch-ups and everything. Are you going to look like a poster? Right, they're all, they're all jack-looking. But they have a, a belly. They, they do the sunken thing. The, the... It's really simple, man. If you want to look like these, these people out there, go and do what they're doing. Take the drugs. Yeah, man. But remember, it's temporary. It's fake. I don't know what it's called, like when they suck in the belly. You know? It's called a vacuum. Huge freaking shoulders, huge traps, arms, legs, quads. Everything's massive and the belly's not existent. What the hell is going on there? So maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm being fooled. Maybe these guys are all posing and, and you know, hiding. In my mind, logically speaking, when I see somebody who is jacked through the roof and has papers and things skin, they're shredded, drugs. It can't be anything else, man. It simply cannot be anything else. No, it's not. It's because that's what people think about me. Because it's my training. My training is go is geared toward being jacked and big. Your training is geared towards getting these androgen receptor strength. A phony, fake strength to lift something heavy. So how the fuck could you be jacked lifting this weight? See what I mean? Why aren't you jacked? You lift heavy. I seen you. You deadlift. You squat. You bench heavy so why aren't you jacked if a, if lifting a heavy weight if a stronger could get you bigger then why aren't you bigger see what i mean so how, how does it work like because that's not the, the stronger that gets you bigger when you get stronger through myofibular growth you get bigger but if you get a stronger lift practicing at a lift adaptation for androgen receptors that kind of strength you ain't never gonna get a bigger Get it? Unless it's sarcoplasmic or something, maybe you got some phony, uh, phony muscles to get, get, get bigger. But you definitely ain't gonna get it stronger from getting that type of bigger. I don't know, man. So, you know, in one way, I'm very, very happy that he won 50 on the bench press, but part of me is like, but you look like shit, dude. Yeah. It's weird, man. It, you, know, you do look like shit. The, the human condition is freaking weird, man. <sighs> You 
you want to be happy, but something kind of holds you back. Um, because there's like this, there's this want that we want to be at two different places at the same time. And it doesn't work unless you do the drugs. When you do the drugs, then you can do all sorts of weird things and logic doesn't make sense anymore. Um, I don't know. I eat big to try and put on a lot of muscle, the belly comes out. I stop eating big, so the belly goes down, my other muscles go down, everything goes down. So either you want to be big or small, you pick. And it sucks. I don't like it, but that's the way it is. 150 kilo bench press and I've got a belly. Appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs> this is the typical people, these, these gym slaves, that they're always complaining. Look at this guy, man. He looks so average. This is crazy. I'll see you in the next one. Tell me what you think about that. Like, subscribe, support the channel. See you in the next one. Ciao, friend. Ivan Dujeric, man, you need a lot. You got a lot to learn, bro. I mean, it's not just about lifting, all right? See you later.